we're going to con continue working with this uh, little eight, seven segment display, eight digits here, using the Max uh, 7219 module uh, and our Arduino. Now, uh, if you go to eBay and just search Max 7219 LED. The first few things you'll see here are just the chip, which you can get alone. Uh, but you just scroll down a little bit further, and you can actually get the board with the chip and everything, the whole module, uh, and the eight digits uh, for about a buck sixty shipped to your house. It might take a couple of weeks. It's going to come from Hong Kong, uh, but not very expensive and the only thing you need to do with this board is be able to solder on these pins and in fact you only need to solder on uh, one half of them unless you're using more than one display so be able to solder on five of those pins and it's only a buck sixty right now now once you do that uh, obviously if you this is part of a series hopefully you watched the first video on installing the library once the library is installed and you've played with the demos a little bit Go ahead and check out the link in the description of this video. It should take you to my GitHub page. Uh, there, if you went to uh, github.com forward slash metalx1000, went to repositories and searched for hardware, you should be able to find my repository where I put all my code for Arduinos and ESPs and other microcontroller stuff. Download that repository, uh, and inside there is uh, an Arduino folder, and then there's a seven-segment display, and then today we're going to be working with the serial control. So let's go ahead and open that up. So once you have that downloaded, open it up. This is the entire code here, and notice that I'm using different pins than the example code did. Not a big deal. I'm using pins 5, 4, and 2 rather than 10... What is it? 12, 11, and 10, I think the default code does. Not, not a big deal. You can always change the pins if you want to use those default pins. So, once you have that set up, we can go ahead and send the code up there. It's compiled and upload. And right away, the first thing this is going to do is it's going to clear the display. And it's kind of hard to see with the lighting here, but there we go. It's, it does 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, just to give you a little code there. Now, it's waiting, the Arduino is waiting for serial input. So what you can do is you can go up to tools and choose um, serial monitor or you can press control shift M. And of course remember whatever baud rate we're using here. So control shift M, choose the correct rate. Make sure you set this to new line so it knows when you press enter. And if I do that and I put in a number such as three, I can hit enter and you can see that first number hit turn to three. If I press three again, it changes the next number. Five, it changes the number six. You know, or I can just keep doing one across the board. But basically, it just keeps whatever number I send it, it puts it there, whatever spot it's in, and moves to the next digit to the left. Now, if you send a larger number and it responds back in the serial console saying, I have received whatever you've put in. If you put in something that it doesn't recognize, it's going to send back, I believe, whatever the last thing you sent was. So in that case, it was a three. If you put a number that's bigger, let's say I do uh, four, five, and six, and hit enter, because we're doing one digit at a time, it just puts a six. It puts whatever the last digit was. Uh, so let's go ahead, and that's manually sending it through a serial monitor here. Let me open up a terminal here, and there are many serial consoles and I'm here on Linux and the core tools should have a script or a program called STTY. So in the code here I put an example code. So what we're doing here, let me copy this and paste it here. So STTY raw echo and then the less than symbol and then whatever your USB device is. And again this is on Linux here. So, and then everything at the pound here is just a comment. It's saying activates connection. Boom. So now I can read and write to that, to this file, uh, to this serial port with plain text, uh, which is pretty cool because I didn't even tell it what rate I'm using and it just seems to figure it out. Uh, so now if I was to echo uh, zero and I can echo that into dev TTY USB zero, you can see that it made a zero on the board here, on the display. And I can keep saying that command over and over again to send zeros, or I can send a one and keep sending that over and over again. But I've also put 
two shell scripts inside the folder with this, but also one of the shell scripts is written here in a one-liner, and this loops through all digits. So I can take that, and I can paste that in here, and basically it's a loop. It's a while loop. It says while one, which means it's going to go forever until I kill it, and then it's going to go four, zero through nine. It's going to loop, and then I don't know why I picked nine. Probably should have done eight, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then it's going to go through 9 again and echo out the digits. So now if I hit enter with that, it's going to sleep 0 0.05 seconds between each character being sent. Uh, so you can adjust that as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you can see it does zeros, then ones, then twos, then threes, then fours, then fives, and six, then sevens, eights, and nines. Oh, I probably did nine because I wanted to do all nine digits. That's why I did it, even though there's only eight digits on here. So that's one way you can run this, this little script. I can press Control C to kill that and run it again, but this time instead of echoing the I variable, I can echo the X variable, which is going to, instead of doing one number all the way across and then the next number, now it's doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but each time moving over uh, two spots actually because it's going through nine. If I had set it to eight, it would go through one, one spot each time. But that's just an example of showing it. So now, theoretically, what you could do is, let's say you wanted to display the weather, you know, the temperature outside on the screen. You can have this Arduino hooked to your computer. Your computer can grab the weather from online and pass it to the screen here. Uh, although there's a better option which we're going to go over in the next video or so, because right now we're using our Arduino, which is great if the Arduino already knows what you want to display to the screen, or you're going to always have it hooked to a computer like we do right now. But, we've been doing a lot of work with the ESP8266 uh, module, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get this display working with an ESP chip, and then we're going to set it up so that you can send HTTP uh, requests to the device using your browser or your shell using something like wget or curl and you can send text uh, certain letter uh, characters and all your digits here remotely. You could also have the board check itself so I can either send information to the ESP and display it on the chip here wirelessly using my Wi-Fi and any web browser so I can use my cell phone, tablet, desktop, computer, what have you, or, like I said, if you wanted it to always be displaying the weather, the chip itself could go to the internet periodically and grab the temperature and display it on there. But that's the sort of thing we're going to be going over in the next video or two, so be sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss the future tutorials. Uh, also, check out all my playlists to make sure you're watching videos in order, and check out all the links in the description, one of which is to my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Uh, there's a link to that in the description, as I just said. There you can search through the videos from both my channels. Also, you can um, go to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash x 1000 If you watch a lot of my videos and you like a lot of my videos and you want to support, you can become a supporter there, um, and that would be great. You get early access to some videos. Also, you can go to... Um, my website, my main website, Films by Chris, and there's a link there to donate using uh, PayPal. So if you want to just do a one-time donation, you can do that that way. And if you can't donate financially, if you can't support me that way, support me by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. All those things help gratefully, gratefully, uh, enormously. There we go. So, again, we're going over a lot of displays this month. Uh, and this is just one, and we're just going over different ways of using it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you keep on watching, and I also hope that you have a great day.